Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So, this week we are continuing on from last week's fight code and we are going to be making our slash animation. So, this here is the Undertale slash animation art and I'm going to make my own and show you how I do it. So, we're actually going to put this into the fight sprite. So, go across to costumes, into the bottom left corner to paint. We're going to call this slash. I'm going to start off with a red circle with no outline. And then I'm going to use this tool here to create additional points and turn this into the full slash. I recommend you show the sprite here, drag it over your enemy and see what it looks like. So I'm going to make mine a little bit smaller. And at the end, make sure you select the whole sprite and drag it so that it's centered. Okay, so now the next thing to do is we're going to duplicate this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to delete part of it working from the bottom up like this. So you select this tool here and we're going to take this point, click on it. When it's all highlighted blue, press the delete button and now it's gone. We can delete this one as well maybe. And then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this and we're going to delete another point on the bottom. And just keep going, duplicating, and each time deleting some of the sprite. Now I'm going to make it so that I've got five different costumes. Now if you watch up here, this is what it's going to look like. That, then that, then that, then that, then that. So you can go back now and edit some of these if you want. And once you're happy with your five different slash animations, what you need to do is you need to reverse the order. So we need the smallest one to go first and the largest one to go last. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to rename these so that they're properly in order. So at the end, what we should have is slash one, that starts off very small, slash two gets a bit bigger, slash three gets it bigger again, slash four gets even bigger, and slash five is the final one. Now, of course, you can add in additional costumes if you want, but I'm gonna keep it to five. All right, now let's go back to the code. So we need to look for define slash animation. This is where we're going to be putting our code. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see it. Make sure that there's a bunch of space underneath define slash animation. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure that this is going to be on the front layer. It needs to be on top of your enemy. So go to looks, get out, go to front layer. Then we need to clear graphic effects. This one here, because we use some ghost and brightness effects on our aim bar. The next thing we need to do is we need to set the size. Now I'm going to keep mine pretty close to 100%. I'm going to make mine maybe 90%. But if your slash is too big or too small, this is the time to change it using some code. The next thing that we need to do is get out switch costume to slash one. This needs to be the first slash in your sequence of animations. Now go to motion, get out, go to random position, change random position to be your enemy, and get out a change Y by 10, and a point in direction 90. We're going to use these to adjust the starting position of our slash. Let's go to control, let's get out a weight, zero, 0.2 seconds. Let's go to looks and get out a show block. Now go to control, get out a repeat four. We're going to go to motion and get out a change Y, a turn 15 degrees. 
I'm gonna choose this one, the clockwise one, because that's the direction of my slash. Go to control, get out a wait. Now you can decide how long to wait for. I found that I quite liked 0.09 seconds, but maybe you want a slightly longer or shorter wait. And then we're going to go to looks because we need our next costume. Now let's change some of these numbers. This change Y, I'm gonna make that minus three. That's going to move the slash down slightly. And this turn 15 degrees, I'm gonna change that to five degrees. We'll see what that looks like. Let's get a hide block and put it on the bottom and then let's give it a test. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Although if we start it again, I'm gonna change the angle of my slash a little bit. Change this 90, probably to about 75. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I quite like that. So now that we've got our animation code mostly done, let's create some code that will actually deal the damage to the enemy. So go up to your define damage enemy code and let's see what we've got so far. So this if here, what this does is figures out when we hit the space bar where the aim bar is, this white bar. If it's too far away from the center, if it's too far right, or if it's too far left, then the enemy dodges. And if it's in the middle, then the enemy doesn't dodge and it deals damage. So how far is too far away? Well, we've decided it's 100 pixels to the right or 100 pixels to the left. So let's get a variable to keep track of this for us. Let's go to variables, click on make a variable, and we're going to call this enemy dodge. Press okay and pull out enemy dodge and put it over your 100 pull out another enemy dodge, just put it off by itself for now. We need to go to operators because we need to get out a minus, put that over our minus 100 and get out enemy dodge and put it after the minus. So now we're going to have a variable. We'll set that at the beginning of the game and that's going to be how much dodge the enemy has. The higher the number, the worse their dodge is, which is a little confusing, but remember, it's how many pixels away from the center the aim bar has to be to hit. So let's set that up now, shall we? Go to your enemy sprite. For me, that's the scratch cat. Look for when green flag clicked. And we're gonna put some variables in here. Go to variables, get set enemy dodge to 100 if you want to keep it the same as it was before. Feel free to experiment with making this number larger or smaller if you want the game to be harder or easier. Having the dodge set as a variable means that you can also change this later into the game. Maybe you use an ability and it makes the dodge get better or worse. Now we're going to make the enemy HP variable. Click on make a variable, type in enemy HP and press OK. Pull out set enemy HP. I'm just gonna say 300 for now. You can change this if you want later. Let's go back to the fight sprite and make one more variable. And this one's going to be called damage. Press okay. So if we miss the enemy, we need to set the damage to zero. So pull out a set damage to zero and put that underneath enemy dodges and then pull out another set damage and put it above our enemy hit. Now we could, if we wanted to, just decide that our damage is 30 maybe, and it's always 30. But I'm gonna show you something that's kind of interesting. What if our damage changed depending on how close to the middle we got? So we could say, that the damage we dealt was always enemy dodge take away x coordinate because with our aim bar if it's right here it's in the middle then it's zero 
So for example, if we hit the attack button right here, it would be 100 take away zero. So that's 100 damage. But if we hit the attack button when the aim bar was here, the X coordinate would be 50. So it would be 100 take away 50 is only 50 damage. The further away from the center you get, the less damage you deal. But the problem is, what about the left side? On the left side, these are all minus numbers and the maths no longer works. But we have a solution. Go to operators, the green category, and look for something called ABS of. Drag that out by itself. Now ABS stands for absolute value. And what this does is if you give it a negative number, it turns it into a positive number. But if you give it a positive number, it stays a positive number. So this solves our problem. So to complete our code, we need to get out a minus operator, put our ABS into the second part of that minus. Let's go to variables, get out enemy dodge, put that into the first part of our minus operator, go to motion, the dark blue category, and look down until you find X position and drag that out and put it into our ABS of. This whole thing, drag that into set damage to 30. So this broadcast enemy hit is what makes your enemy flash with that ghost effect. So we actually want to take this out for now, throw that away. We're going to add it in later after our slash animation has had a chance to run. Speaking of which, Scroll down to the bottom of your define slash animation code. We're going to go to control, get out an if then, and put it above our hide. Just move this hide down so it's underneath the if then. We're going to ask a question whether or not the enemy has taken any damage. So let's go to operators. Let's get out a greater than put that in between the if and the then, go to variables, get out damage, put it into that first slot, click on that 50 and type in zero. Go to events, get out broadcast enemy hit. Then we're going to go to variables and change enemy HP by minus damage. So let's go to operators, get out a minus, put it inside that change enemy HP, back to variables and get out damage. Now I'd like to know how much damage we're dealing. So go to looks, get out say hello for two seconds and put it underneath our change enemy HP, go to variables, get out damage, put it over the hello, and change that two seconds into one second. Let's give that a bit of a test. So let's see what happens when one's far away. Well, 34, okay. What if we get one closer? 90 damage, excellent. That's all working as we want it to. The left side as well. Now, of course, these speech bubbles look a bit strange, don't they? So next week, we're going to build an improved number system where we can even create our own font and create our own damage numbers that appear. Untick some of these variables. I'd recommend speed, uh, enemy HP, enemy dodge and damage. And that's everything for this week. So as always, subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications when the next episode is coming out, when we're doing live streams and that kind of thing. Stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.